This corporation is giving you the opportunity to have financial freedom and it gives you a tax shelter or a tax instrument. What it is, it's not that the LLC is expensive because it's not. You learn what an LLC is, learn what an S Corp is. No. You can get an LLC for as little as $100, sometimes less than that. Having an employee not you know, actually onboarded properly can cost you your business. Yeah, absolutely. Get your LLC form, get a good business name. You need to have a training program put into place. Model the type of boss that- This isn't a TV that, show. Yeah, that you, that you would want to work for. We went from ground zero cleaning homes for a handful of customers to providing commercial cleaning services to over 300 accounts. We've been in your shoes and today we're sharing our blueprint with you. By the end of this video, you'll know how much money you'll need to start, what training is required, and how to file your business with the proper insurances and tools. Well, welcome back, Greg. Um, we're at it again. Um, I, I did want to just put in a, a quick disclaimer that a lot of the stuff we're going to be talking about today is um, California and Arizona specific because those are the two states that that we operate in. Um, so I I always encourage as we you know start looking at like well, how do you file your LLC and yeah. what do you do this. There are very state specific things that people need to know, but it's pretty general. I mean, state to state, but yeah, it, you're right. It, it is just check with your state, know what it is. But I think more importantly, before we really get going here, a couple of podcasts ago we talked about. Um, you wearing a wig, the entire the entirety oh, of a podcast. Okay. Um, if we got enough likes, and we weren't specific enough, so today we're gonna we're gonna be specific. Okay, if we are gonna have Greg wear a wig, a wig like a full on a wig. full on wig for like the full. full wig? Well, I, I'll let be you, anything. I'm gonna let you choose. No, that. you guys need to choose. Okay, well, uh, just no, we, bring it as a surprise. Like if if it even makes it. Okay, on. so if it makes. It. We're not asking for a lot. 100 likes on this podcast. If we get 100 likes, Greg's in a wear wig the entirety of the next podcast. And I can tell you, because I've seen him in a wig, it is hilarious. It's hilarious. And I don't think I'm going to be able to get through the entire podcast. You'll do it. Yeah, no, maybe not. I don't, I, I'm going to be. What if I have a wig exactly like your hair? Uh, well, we tried that once in a video it and it doesn't, like, you can't do this with a wig, dude. I'm sorry. Like you need to have like I know what the wig is you're gonna wear. It's gonna be like the big perm wig. It's nice. It's nice. It's it's very nice. You're gonna it, people are gonna love this wig. That's case I'm bringing it. But a only chain. but only if we get 100, 100 likes. One hundred. Okay. That's not very many. I mean, really, we have a lot of subscribers. I mean, come on. So Greg said, and I'm not I'm not signing up for this, but I'm just saying, okay. He was like, how, he said how, that he's signing up. How many, how many subscribers would we need to get for you to shave your head, Matt? Um, I'm not ready to put a number on it, but I, it has to be over 10,000 subscribers. If we get 10,000 subscribers, uh, I'll shave month. my head on camera. In a month, not like total. No, no, in a month. Because you say total. No, not total. I mean, that, well, I might, be, bald. I might be bald by then. Yeah. So it wouldn't matter. All right. Well, let's get serious and start talking about the topic today and- Sorry for derailing the topic. It's yeah, a very so. important topic, actually, because how you form your business is, you know, you got to have the grassroots. You got to have the foundation. Right. Well, and, you know, I think it's important that we, you know, that we um, relate to, I think, how a lot of people started, you know, start their businesses in this industry or any kind of service based. You know, I can I, I know how to clean. I know how to mow a lawn. I know how to do this. All these, you know, entry level service businesses. Most most people are starting them by just going down to Home Depot and buying a bucket and some cleaning products and they've got a buddy who gave them an account. Um, they're sending them a paper invoice on like a carbon copy three, you know, three carbon copy type of thing. Like it's very, very they basic. Don't know what carbon copy is anymore. Okay. Well it's I, just like Zillow. Let me Zillow you the money. Oh, Zell you or Zillow you or or what is it? Venmo. Venmo you not Zillow. I mean yeah. what are you doing? Like only sell like sell you a house? Oh, sorry. Come on, bro. He could right. sell a house. He'd be good at that. I, I might be, but Zell or Venmo, yeah. I'll buy but your house anyway. So what I, what I see is is that they start it, they start the cleaning before they start the business. I agree, right? And so you know, what's important is that they have you have to have some kind of plan. Like I had my daughter come to me the other day because she's writing a um, a scholarship um, essay on mm -hmm. like starting up a business. And it says in the in the requirements, you must have a business plan. And so, of course, she comes to me and she's like, well, Dad, 
help me write a business plan. And I'm like, like, are you kidding me? I'm like, I, I'm, like, go, I'm like, go online and look up how to write a business plan. I'm like, but you know what you, and then the first thing I said is, is like, what's the formation going to be? And she's like, well, I don't understand. And I'm like, is it a nonprofit? Is it an LLC? Is it an S corp? Is it a C corp? Like, how are you doing this? And she's like, well, I never thought about that. Mind you, she's going to UC Davis. She's not a dumb kid, right? Like she's a, she's a smart kid. But that's not what but, they teach you in school. But that's not what they teach you. And, and it's, so it's, it's one of those things that people just don't know what they don't know. So I think the first thing that I always recommend to someone is you got to know what the tax laws are and you got to know how to protect yourselves. So even if you're going to take on one account, you need to have some kind of corporate formation. And so how I explain it to people is this. If you're a sole proprietor... Okay, a sole proprietor is going to be um, all of your business is going to run through your social security number. And so you're not protecting yourself and you're also not creating a tax, you know, shelter or, or any kind of taxation shelter around your, you know, your business because everything's going directly through your social security number. But I think protections and separation of assets, separation of expenses, you need to have a corporate filing of some sort. The, the one we recommend to franchisees is which one? Yeah, we we recommend LLCs. I mean, if you're looking at an S-Corp or C-Corp, yeah, you can go public with an S-Corp or a C-Corp. The majority of, like we're talking about here, getting out there, you know, cleaning buildings, you more likely won't go public. And if you want to later on down the road, you become su extremely successful, you can always change it. But you want to have like, the small mom and pop with the protections that an S corp or a C corp could have. Yep. And that's what an LLC is. So limited liability corporation, it does give you that ability to say, you know what, if everything fails and a lot of entrepreneurs do this, I can walk away from this LLC and they're not taking my house. They're not going to garnish my bank account for my personal stuff. They may take, you know, your business bank account, yeah. but they're that's safe. You can walk away from it, and a lot of people are that, where if you're just going into the city and getting a sole proprietorship, and like Matt's saying, it's all connected to your LLC or to your social, you don't have an EIN, employer identification number, where it's kind of like your business's social security number, you're doing it wrong. So yeah. when I look at that, I deal with a lot of startup people, franchisees, and getting them where they've never dealt with this before. A lot of the things that I see with LLCs be like, well, it's really expensive. Yes. Like it's five hundred dollars. It's five hundred dollars, and it's X amount a year. And I've created videos for them and training. But what it is, it's not that the LLC is expensive because it's not. No. It's when you go in there and you're adding things to your LLC. Uh, these online places like, oh, I want to have HR support at ninety nine dollars a month. I want to have you as my registered agent. That's three hundred dollars a year. You know, that type of stuff that people don't really realize that you really don't need when you're small. No. You can get an LLC for as little as $100, sometimes less than that. You can register If you want to do your rest. own EIN, you yeah. can probably get it for just your filing fee. Yep. And then you can go to IRS, you can register your LLC in there, they'll give you an EIN right there. You're not paying somebody 60 bucks. So what are they doing? They're, they're kind of, you know, going after you because you don't know what you're doing. You're like, well, it's really easy. I don't know what I'm doing. Go ahead and do it. So there is ways to make it very affordable for the regular person. And yep. really, as much as you pay for a, a business license, you go in and get a business license in the in the county, and I bet you it's 70 bucks. Yep. Where you can get an LLC online, do it all, 100 bucks, you're done. Put it on a credit card, you can't afford it, and pay it off over time, whatever. Right. But at least then you're protected. You go in, and when we say protected, it's not just protected in case something happens. But if you're brand new, maybe you leave the door unlocked and they steal all your stuff. They're going after you. And you got to go out of business. Yeah. Well, and these are things that, you know, the protections, it's not only the protections. I think what, what I always explain to folks, and, I, and I'm glad you brought up that it's not, people don't do it because it's too expensive. It's, they don't do it because they're intimidated. The intimidation turns into, I le reached out to LegalZoom. LegalZoom said it's going to cost me 800 bucks. I told you so. It's too expensive. And so then they just go to sole proprietorship. But at the end of the year, when they have to pay taxes, on their earnings, they're paying taxes on, it's a lot harder to, to you know, segregate expenses, right? To um, when everything's in one bank account because you're a sole proprietor. 
Um, and it, you know, it, it, that's, that's the issue that I see a lot. So if you create an LLC, how I always explain it to, to franchisees or anybody who ever asks, an LLC and an S Corp are considered pass-through organizations, right? So all of the profits of that LLC or S Corp, and I'm not an accountant, okay? I'm not claimed to be, and so don't take every word I say as if it's gold, but you need to go and talk. So I'm going to give you like a 30,000 foot view, okay? These are pass-through organizations. A C Corp is taxed on its own, right? So just define for people that don't understand what pass-through is. Okay, pass-through so for me sounds like, you know, I got a strainer and I'm running water through it. Okay, so that's great. So if when you create an LLC or an S Corp, they are individual entities. That's how the government sees it as a tax as a, as a taxable um, individual. Basically. So it's like a person, right? It's like a person. So the but the, the difference is, you, so you can get credit through your LLC, you can run expenses through your LLC, you can pay people through your LLC or your S corp, and you get. You, but whatever's left over at the end of the year is going to go pass through to its principals, its, its owners, and those owners are they going to take the profits or the losses of that company, and they're going to apply that to their personal taxes. So if you're doing things properly, you're using, a, for example, a business vehicle to go from building to building. When you bought that vehicle, you bought it in your own name. Well, when you start an LLC, you could refinance that vehicle and you can put it into your LLC name. And when you do that, now that LL, you know that, that vehicle is an LLC expense. Yes, it's no longer your expense. And so what you're you're you know trying to do is you're trying to to put the the you know the most of the expenses of your actual business through your corporation. So at the end of the year, you're not having to pay a bunch of money off of this because this is probably close to zero. And in most cases, businesses you're that are just starting, loss. they're going to operate at a loss. Because you have different tax opportunities with an LLC or an S corp around depreciation, um, around what you can write off, and, and again, you should be looking at the tax codes, in um, you know the federal and the state tax codes. Get a good accountant and have them explain to you the benefits, but stop paying for gas for your corporate vehicle on your oh, yeah. personal card. Stop getting vehicles in your own name and get it in your LLC or S Corp name. You may have to guarantee it, but it's a business expense. Yeah, it's still the same. So now what you have is is you have a you you have credit with this entity, this little this little thing that you created that gives you power. Now you can get lines of credit. You can do all kinds of other things that you probably couldn't have done on your own. But this corporation is giving you the opportunity to have financial freedom, and it gives you a tax shelter or a tax instrument, you know? And so that's the stuff that like, I'm afraid to do it. And I'm like, all right, well, you're afraid to do it, but you're only hurting yourself, you know? So you learn what an LLC is, learn what an S corp is. Most people that are on, you know, listening to this podcast are not going to be a C corp. I mean, we're, you know, yeah, I mean, we're at a point right now as an organization and being in business, as long as we have that we're considering it. Um, so that we, you know, don't have as much pass-through taxation yeah. um, to the principals. But, it, you know, we've been doing this for 30 years. So it, it's a little bit different. The, the, the numbers are definitely different. So the other thing that I see a lot that people don't do is they choose, they don't choose a good name. All right? So it's, it's, your LLC name can be, you know, Joe Blow and Associates it's, LLC. It can be anything. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, Right. But your fictitious business name and your your um, like your DBA, you're doing business yeah, as business name, license, all that stuff. You know, we don't have to go through this because Andrea, um, our marketing director here, did a fantastic video on this on YouTube, and I and I, you have to I, see that. You have to go over there and watch it. This video is all about how to create a brand. You need a name and a logo that people will recognize, and if you don't have that then you're going to go in as, you know, Greg Stowe's cleaning or, you know, clean. you know, something, right? And people are going to be like, that's lame, you know? And if you name it, because most people name it after themselves, Greg's yeah. cleaning service. Chuck's window cleaning. Chuck's window cleaning. That's a real, that's real. That's, that was real. My dad. But what happens when Chuck's not there cleaning windows? Greg was doing it. People freak yeah, out. It was still Chuck's cleaning. I know, but people freak people out. They lose their mind. They're like, who's Chuck? Chuck's not here? Well, I, I, I can't be here then. You can't be in my house. You're not Chuck. Chuck fall off a ladder. Yeah, Chuck did fall off a ladder. But so you need to have a good name. 
um, and you you have to you know get a fictitious bi business name filing done at um, you know at your recorder's office. And it's very simple. I mean, it's very simple. If you need help, put a like in the comment. Don't don't like because I don't want to wear a wig. But <laughs> like like okay. like. Hey Greg, can you give me a call? And if you really have you know issues, I can help you out. Yeah. So it's very simple. I'll take the fear away from it. Get it. I mean, so it, it doesn't have no to like necessarily have to be in order, right? But I I mean, you could sit around the, the you know the the you know the fireplace with somebody that you you know that, that you trust or whatever say whatever you know go to a conference you know the conference room go to a starbucks and just like what's the name you know come up with a name write a bunch of them down put it in ai a, you put it in ai good good cleaning good cleaning, good cleaning company name who knows what comes I mean, from that use your resources and, and actually if any of you find uh you could do that put the names that you find in the, in the comments, comments because i would be really interested to see what it comes up at but Get a name. That's going to be your fictitious business name. You need an LLC with a corporate name. Um, you need to EIN, file an EIN with the, with the, with the IRS. Um, so those are important things. But now we start moving into things like, you know, after you set that stuff up, you need insurance, right? So, you know, and everyone, I, I already know what people are thinking. I need accounts. Like, how do I, I, you know, it's great that I'm doing all this stuff, but I don't have money to pay for it. Like, how do I get accounts? Again, you can go to YouTube and you can look that up. There's lots of information on there about how you can get accounts. So there's there's no re, you know no need. Yeah, Matt's to, got some good videos on how to yeah, get accounts. No no need to panic there. We can help you with that. Um, but this is one that I'd love to hear your opinion on. Um, do you need to uh, have formal training or certifications for commercial cleaning? And if if you do, or you have recommendations, um, you know what are the best resources? Well, I always look at it as. You know, if you're looking at someone that's just starting, um, who is your customer? If you're going into a medical facility, um, I don't care if it's a doctor's office that you go, if you have our kids have a cold, um, or a surgery center, or even, you know, a acute care hospital environment, yes, you need to know what you're going to talk about, because you're going to have people in there that this is a specialized, you know, line of business that they're doing. You know, there is certain you know, disinfectants you have to use. You need to know what you're talking about. Yeah. So in that scenario, yes. And they're, they're easily attainable. I'll be honest with you. A lot of the certifications are not, the tests are not easy. Um, you've got to take it over and over again sometimes and to get your certificate. But if you're walking in, that does dispel some of the fears. Like we deal with very large, um, well-known medical, you know, organizations here in, in Southern California and they don't even want to talk to you if you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Because to them, it's a huge fine. So if you're dealing with medical, yes. If you're dealing with, I, I just want to clean your office and you're just getting started, I'm a, I'm a hospital guy. I say yes because we're also not only cleaning, we're also making it a, a safe environment. But I would say maybe not. Yeah. Um, there are organizations, ISSA, um, that, that that's a great organization to, to follow. Um, you have team cleaning. There's You can go down a rabbit hole on what yeah. you can and can't do as far as certifications. Do you need it? Is someone going to kick you out if you don't? No. No. I, I mean, they may not take you seriously in certain environments, but they're not going to kick you out the door. No, and I think there are times where I, I don't, in all the years that I've been selling accounts, I don't think I've ever been asked, do we have a certification in Sims or this or that or whatever? Like, I, I've never been asked. There are certain, like, Speaking to that, there are government agencies. So let's say we're doing work for the Veterans Hospital. Correct. They have certifications that their vendors must meet to even qualify to bid. Yeah. So they have to have a person that's, you know, certified by AHE, American Hospital Association, things yeah. like that. Um, so that you can't even bid it. I, I think more importantly, it's, you know, the training that, like, do not start your business without having an LLC form, having your yeah. business name, you know, et cetera. But the next phase of that, right, is that people are, oh, I need to be certified. I know I need to know everything. See, I'm the kind of guy who doesn't need to know everything. Like I, I, I the way I learn is I go in and I just get stepped on and I figure out how I don't, that doesn't happen again. That is not the case for most people. Like most people are going to say, I need to know all of the stuff before I can start anything. 
I would ask that like one I've learned over time is that I need to know a little bit more than nothing. And I would suggest for those who think they need to know everything is that you need to know a little less. And so somewhere in the middle of that is where success is. But the, the training that you create, right? Simple onboarding program, right? How do I onboard an employee? How do I do this legally? And that stuff is, you know, it's very simple to do. But I think a lot of people forget that. Like they don't even consider that port. They part. don't. They don't. They don't consider it. They don't even have, they don't have a simple training program. They don't have it, checks and balances. There's no QA. Uh, there's no training built in. Um, shoot, and there's, having there's an no employee, uniform. yeah, yeah, having an employee not, you know, actually onboarded properly, can cost you your business. Yeah, absolutely. All it the can fines, literally taxes, cost you your business. Everything else. So you you've got to have get your LLC form, get a good business name. You need to have a training program put into place. And if that, you don't know how to do sense. a training program, search it. Yeah, search yeah. it up. I know we're gonna we're actually gonna put out a you know a subscription based training program here shortly. Yeah, and you know that's that may be something that you guys can say, hey, let you know, it's definitely worthwhile, because yeah. most people don't know. They don't know what we didn't know. So no, I, and I, I think that's you're you're right on. I mean, it, we early days we went to the um, ISSA um, uh, uh, conference or, or trade show out in Las Vegas and and we bought I think this was before like yeah, I think you were in the military no I, I, I was there and I actually okay. bought it with you so there. we we bought like a really cheesy video training program that this guy was like 125 years old yeah and he was like I'm like dude I need, I don't even know I don't how. even know it was DVDs or VHS it was, it was bad it was terrible and, and it was made in the 60s like the TVs were like this big you know that they were showing really their dusting like the computers were like you know the size of this room you know it was crazy I mean, we were like oh man this is everything you know and we we knew we needed something and so we got whatever was available and that's what was available at yeah. the time so you know it, for nowadays most of our kids can create videos on their phone yeah, edit them and 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 create you know show like hey this is how you try you clean a restroom this is how you do this how you do that but like you said you don't have to reinvent the wheel because we're going to be you know uh, rolling out some stuff soon you got to have training yeah you, you got to have it. training you got to have a system um you got to know how to onboard people and you need to do it right so um and if you don't you're going to be in big trouble uh so the the next uh, that i hear a lot is like what about insurance and this is where things get really confusing for people. It does. Um, I would say with my franchisees that I first onboard, remember these are like, I always treat them like, you know, they're, they're your children. They don't know anything right now and you're going to teach them. This is the thing that they get the most scared about and the most confused at the same time. Yeah. So why don't you talk about what type of insurance is that, so that we you, require? You're not, really, it's the state requires. You're not going to get into a door to talk to anybody if you don't have liability insurance, commercial liability. And, you know, you're going to um, want to talk to whoever your agent is and have a, you know, say, I'm sure you insure. Um, sure you insure? Yeah. I'm no certain course. that you insure. There we go. Um, you know, other janitorial companies, what are the what are the minimums? Yeah. You know, what what are they doing? Um, make sure you trust the person though. And I would get three they, quotes on that. Yeah, yeah, get three quotes. But they're gonna be able to tell you like this is what it is, um, and they'll give you a price. Um, pretty simple. Uh and you know, the way that they typically do it is it's either off of your total payroll or your total gross sales. Um, so that's how they're gonna they're gonna charge you yeah. for your liability insurance. And then you go through an annual audit um and they adjust whatever your rate is uh, from that point on. Uh, but I mean, it's that's pretty easy. That same insurance broker should also be able to provide you with a janitorial bond. Um, and the janitorial bond is is really a theft and loss bond. Um, so and so, the, that's a one time a year deal. And to, to speak to that, um, a lot of people get confused what a bond is because while a bond is a, you buy it from an insurance agent, right? Yeah. It is not actually an insurance product. What it is is they're borrowing, let's say for us it's 25000 from a company that has, let's say, $25,000 to loan people just in case. Yeah. So if I go in and I leave, like Matt's saying, theft, things like that, I go in and I intentionally steal $10,000 worth of computers. Yeah. And I go to my bond agency and say, look, I, I need to cash in on this bond. They're going to give you the $10,000 once... All the legalities happen. But then they're going to say, you know what, Greg? I need that $10,000 back. 
because it is not like if you go out and get in a car accident, you pay your deductible. It's not a deductible-based thing. And that's where a lot of people get confused when you see bonded insured. Yeah. So bonded for us, it's a pay to play type of thing. We have a bond because companies make us have a bond. I want to see your bond just in case because they know, especially smaller companies, if I'm a small mom and pop, it's important. Yeah, it is. Because I probably don't have 30,000 bucks in the bank. But but even then, I can't, uh, you know, with, with the larger clients that we have, don't ask. They, they don't even ask for a bond. Um, you know, they, they, they don't really care. They want to know that your limits are high enough on liability insurance. Um, that being said, though, I have had, um, you know, certain customers, uh, mostly in construction, um, cleanup, things like that, that require performance bonds. Yeah. And that's uh, a totally different thing. That's a totally different thing. C certain municipalities, um, you know, government agencies, you win those contracts, they're going to require that you have a performance bond. Um, I've even heard of certain franchising level, uh, you know, franchisors requiring that their subs... You know, if you deal with like you know, large companies like Home Depot that requires require cleaning companies to have it, yeah, performance. Walmart requires their their cleaning companies to have it. The bigger you know nationwide companies yeah. do because I mean if you don't show up, it's a big deal. It's a huge deal, and then someone's got to pay. So you know those are things that typically it's liability insurance. You need to you know just talk to a good broker who can help you to to figure out the limits, and don't be surprised as you get bigger that you're going to need to get higher limits. I mean it, because you're going to go into larger clients. Um, larger customers are going to have different requirements. Um, and look, insurance and that whole world of insurance is changing. Um, you know, so there's there's subrogation. There's all sorts of weird things now that people are asking for. So it's important too that when you get your insurance, that you get it from a broker who's going to be that's going to be helpful. Yeah. Because I, I I've seen a lot of um, you know uh, you know franchise owners in particular that are like, yeah, I can't get a hold of my broker. And it's like, you got to have a good relationship with them because they should be a resource. And when a customer asks for the world on like on a, on a liability insurance cert, you need to be able to get that world to quickly. that client quickly or you're going to lose it. Yeah. So um, insurance is definitely one of those really, really important things. So how about uh, something you didn't talk about? How about, um, and the real reason I bring this up is how you get a lot of these questions in, in my training with people that never got commercial auto insurance so so it, so i'm gonna i'm gonna just say this and and we're gonna have to get back to this group uh, you know to, yeah. to our audience about this because we're actually in the middle of really trying to figure some things out around this um a lot has, has been changing in in california and arizona um around commercial auto versus um they they call it something else now but the insurance companies, because they're going through so much loss with wildfires and floods and all these other things, they're trying to find ways to to limit the coverages as much as possible. And one of them, from what we're seeing, is commercial auto. But typically, you need to have a commercial auto policy um, that will cover you in case you get in an accident um, and somebody sees that, like, if you have your car logoed, you're a target. Yeah. You know, if you have stuff in your car and you get in a car accident and they see that you have stuff in there, then they start seeing like, oh, well, it was your fault. You have cleaning chemical in your vehicle. Um, so obviously you're a company too, so I'm going to sue you and your company. And so that's where that 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 auto insurance coverage, um, you know, will help you. But, you know, as, as you reach out to your brokers about it, I, I actually would be curious in the comments, you know, when you're, when you're talking to folks, um, your well, there's like, what are they saying about commercial auto? Because in your state, because it, it's just things are getting, they're just kind of weird right now in California and Arizona, and, and we're working on it to find some better solutions. But um, the other thing that we didn't talk about that's really important is going to be what kind of tools do people need? Yeah. Um, y you know, and tools meaning we're not talking cleaning equipment, no. we're talking about what else. Because we've talked yeah. about that and we have lots of videos on it and you can go and look at it, but more specifically around like bookkeeping and uh, tracking customer complaints and customer information. And this is added on to like you're, you're thinking about your LLC, making it clean. Keeping it clean. With that bookkeeping where it's, you know, if someone asks for your books, you can send it to them like that. Not like, okay, well, let me go back to the back of my car and grab all the stuff out of the glove box and then here you go, Mr. Tax Person. Yeah, let me see what my Venmo report says. Yeah, let me let me send you a screenshot. No, that's not that's not going to Let me go through my bank account and say, I think I bought that for the co company. Yeah, so I, I would say the easiest thing is you've got to, 
it, it doesn't, it, you need to have QuickBooks. QuickBooks online is easy to get. Um, it's, it's not it, expensive. It's, it's inexpensive. Um, I would also say take whatever online courses that they offer. Nobody that, I, I don't have an accounting degree. Um, you know, I don't understand how to book everything. Um, most of it is common sense, but you really should have a bookkeeper who can help you set it up with a chart of accounts so that, you know, and, and what that really means is like, what are the, the, the areas that you're going to dump, mm -hmm. you know, uh, expenses into gas, fuel, you know, whatever. And it's simple now. And, and it's pretty simple. Um, but then you need to have that bookkeeper take a look at it. I would say once a month for a couple hours, um, just to make sure that the way you inputted stuff is done right. Um, because again, what you're doing is treat your company, your LLC, your S corp, um, as a, as a, as a, as one of your children. Yeah. It's and, like you have a partner. I always tell people that like, a, yeah. that's your partner in your business, but you're raising, so then you got to have money there. You can't be like, oh, I made $5,000. I'm going to pull all that out. You got to have no. money in your LLC. Well, I, and I, I use the children analogy because, you know, for, for similar reasons is that if I make 5000 bucks and I take all $5,000 out, how does my child eat? Like $5,000, they, they, trust me. They don't eat, but they don't eat. So you need to leave a little bit there have something. for them to eat and for them to, to grow, et cetera. For that mop bucket that you have to have at two in the morning. Right. And then you're like, oh, because so what do you end up doing? I don't have any money in my bank account for my LLC, so I'm going to go and charge it on my personal card. And then you can't, it's it's very difficult to move that into your LLC account, right? Because now you're having to transfer from a personal card to the, so you need to have money in your accounts. And that all goes into QuickBooks, yeah. right? So you need to have something like QuickBooks. As far as um, CRM is concerned, you know, QuickBooks has actually a lot of op you know options um, now um, and add-ons. So you can make quotes out of QuickBooks. Um, you can keep company you know company information in you QuickBooks. Payroll on QuickBooks. You can now. do payroll in QuickBooks. You can you know you can keep basic information about customers in there. You can upload documents um, onto customer records. So it's it's kind of like it's it's really a CRM light, very light. You know, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't which is fine if you're just starting though. Yeah, I don't overdo it. And then when you do get into a customer relationship management program, just go online, search, you know, janitorial CRM, and there are low cost proprietary CRM products yeah. out there. Like you don't have to, you know, reinvent the wheel here. Um, so that's a customer relations manager for you guys that don't yeah. know what the CRM means. So that's a, it basically just tracks all your incoming, outgoing, right. customer complaints, all the data in one place. If you want to know, hey, who's at this building? Who do I talk to? All that kind of stuff. It makes your customer service really streamlined. Yeah, and CRMs come in all shapes and sizes. You know, so you don't have to buy the, you know, the Rolls Royce. You know, you're kind of buying the Kia, you know? Yeah. Even though Kia has some pretty nice cars right now, I guess. Yeah. So one of the things that was talked about in the intro um, is, you know, how much does it cost to get started? And I, I think that's one of those things that, you know, that's a moving target. Um, yes. It depends where you live, but, a lot of factors. But if I were to itemize things out, you know, you, you know, we're talking about a corporation, we're talking about, um, you know, insurance, we're talking about chemical equipment, um, you know, all of these things that are needed. You know, if you're starting a, a cleaning company and you're actually serious about it, me, and I hopefully you wouldn't be listening to this podcast yeah. if you're not serious, but it, it, you may it, just it, like my hair or, well, or that, but, um, don't forget to like. Um, so what I'll say is I, I would say that, you know, I, I would say that you should probably have around 10,000 bucks in the bank. It's kind yeah, of where looking at equipment, equipment, everything, down payments, equipment. and then have enough to survive for a month, a month, 45 days. 45 days. I, I know there's been some folks in some of the comments that were left before and in, in, in a video like, well, I, I make people, you know, people pay me in advance. Can you give me their number? Yeah, I know. Like 30 some years of doing that. I, I can tell you. That's never happened. I don't think we've ever been paid in no. advance. And and if you're getting it, uh, if you're not successful in your in your in your cleaning <laughs> company, I want you on my sales team. You're definitely successful um, in your payment company. Something's happening. But you know, you could start small. You know, you could get equipment for cheap. You could probably do it for five. But you know, you could do it five, ten thousand, somewhere in that range. I think that's realistic. Um, but you know, people start with a lot less. We did. We did. I mean, we didn't have you know anything besides a you know a, a mop bucket and a couple. We had a workforce though. 
we had, we had a free workforce called Greg and I, um, you know, my, my yeah. parents were really good at, uh, at, at getting us to work so that we could live in a house and, and eat. I think that it was, you live under my roof. Let's not get sidetracked because now, now we're going, we're on to the fight. We're going into <laughs> the sidetrack into the this or that. So this or that fun. All right, let's go. Matt's getting a little bit older. So I figured that this would be a good one. No, no. Um, would you rather lose the ability to lie or believe everything you're told? So I'm a big fan of, the, of Liar, Liar, Jim Carrey. I love that movie um, because I think the truth is that I, I think it's important that you tell people what, exactly what's up, right? Like there are times when you don't say anything, but you should never, you should never lie. So I would say that I, I can't lie. Be a quiet car ride with you, man. It, we would never talk again. I'm just we kidding. would never talk again. <laughs> um, I would do the same. Uh, I couldn't believe everything you're told. That would be a disaster. I don't think I'd make it to work. No. Um, the light is red. No, it's not. Okay. We have someone here that believes that, though. Would you rather know the world's secrets or live ignorantly forever? All right. So yeah, this this could be like. The world secrets, like how the, how the, you know, the political stuff and all that kind of craziness that's going on and, you know, how, yeah, I, I think I'd rather live in ignorance personally. I, I don't, I think there's some scary stuff out there that we don't know about. There's a lot of scary stuff out there. So I was in the military before this as you know, Matt knows, I don't know, but you, all you guys know that, but so I had a top secret security clearance and there's a lot that I don't want to know. So I would live ignorantly forever for sure. Yeah, and the uh, you already said if AI comes out, you know the AI AI robots, you're going to live in the forest somewhere. Yep. We what about it? Come what, with me. Well, what about the AI robots that are cutting down trees? That would be problematic. That would be problematic. Be problematic because they've got like power tools. Anyway, keep going. Can they swim? Because I could just buy a boat. Let's not get too. We're not going to get. We're not going to get into that. Uh, It'll be another day. Would you rather be the person who flips the switch during executions? Or the judge who decides who should be executed. I'd rather be the judge. I'd rather be the person. Well, yeah. I'd... I I, and I I look at it like because this, to right? me I'm like you know as you know I'm like well if, come on this guy deserves a second chance because we do a lot of stuff with background checks with all of our employees are background checked of course and that kind of where it comes to I'm like well you know but I've got a lot of situations where I have that and then you get burnt so I'd rather be the person like. See, I don't want to be the guy. Matt said, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I then you're also looking at like as you go as, as, as the whole as, Holocaust thing. And no, I know. We I don't mean, want to go down the, that. the judge. I think the judge is is, you know, is exacting justice upon someone that's already been that's already been convicted of something. So right? you're never going to lie and you're going to exact some justice on people. You got it. I am avoiding you, bro. Yes. <laughs> um, exacting justice. Wow. Would you rather master a musical instru instrument or have a photographic memory? I'd rather have a photographic memory. I'm with memory. you on that. Uh, totally. I, being able to read something to be able to recall that at any time, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty remarkable. I, I, I'm not speaking down on anybody who, who uh, plays a musical instrument. But if you had a photographic memory, maybe you could still master the musical instrument. Yeah, it's a different, it's an art, it's, that's an art that you just can't. I don't know about that. You could read music and never forget it. And that and that has some value. That's true. Well, that's all we have for this or that. Yep. Matt's gonna get us some questions from yep. our followers. We like to see the same followers too. I, I don't think we we don't have the same follower this no, month though. I, I mean I, I always love this part of it though because I like uh, the screen names are amazing. So just so everyone knows, like, I, like I see the questions um, come in on email. Um, and I, I always want to answer the questions right away. Um, but, but he can't uh, lie. So he has can't laws that deal. So no, but no, Andrea, um, and, and Moses and our marketing team, they do fantastic they work do. in responding. And so, you know, I, we don't always have to, but now we get to, that's why I like this segment. Well, you get the text message them and like this person wants to do it. What do you answer? Yes. Yeah. They, they don't text message me cause they don't, I guess they don't want to know from me. They probably think you're asleep cause you're old. Come on, bro. Well, you're, they're not wrong. I am asleep. I am asleep. All right, so from King Mitchell 653 he asks, what do you do when you've realized that you've bid too low on a new account? Wow, that's a hard one. Have you started the account? We've gone down, down that rabbit hole. We've got a sales rep that goes in and 
and then I go in with operations and people, I'm like, there's no way. Yeah. Because our always motto is like, I can lose big or I can lose small, but it's still a loss. It's still a loss. If it's a ten thousand dollar account that should be fifteen, it's actually a bigger it, loss than a four hundred dollar account that should be six hundred bucks. So I, 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 when I read this question, um, actually in real time when it came in, I was like, all right, so who bid the account? You know, that's the first thing that comes to mind. And so what, what I'd like to do in, in, within our own organization is that if we have a salesperson who's not me and they're out selling an account, someone has to be the second one in who's going to say, yep. yeah, this account is okay. Before we put employees, franchise owner, whatever in it so that there is a, you know, you're not in an account now for a month and you're like, whoa, this, there's no way I can make money here, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what I would suggest is, is that if you're the one who's selling and the one who's cleaning, if you sold it, you should know. If you sold it and then you go in and you're like, oh, well, it's under bid, that's on you. Yeah. You know, you should know what your production rates are. Like, this isn't the first time that I've said this. You know, this has been like, yeah, every video that we yeah, go ever back got, to the math video. I mean, like this is how much production rate. How much can you clean in a certain amount of time? And so then the other thing that came to mind is is that well, I know my production rate, but I'm also selling it, and so that that's just working on your sales chops to be able to be like, hey, you can't go in there and low bid a deal just to get it, because if you do, now you know what the consequence yeah. is. So we, uh, we've but, been around in instances where you could probably attest where. You do the math, and you're paying people to clean their building. Yes. You're actually going out of pocket to come clean their building. You make money by sending them a cancellation notice. Yeah. So you're like, I just made 200 bucks. I'm going to answer this question, okay? What do, you, what do you do? So what you do is you go in to that client, and you're like, let me show you my hours. I, it's my mistake, and I understand if you want to go out to bid and find somebody else. I get it, okay? But I just want you to know what the real numbers are, and the real numbers are this. Yep. And, it, and for me to continue to operate, I need this to do that. And if I can't do that, then I'm going to give you notice. Yep. Right? There's no other choice. And, it, you know, in any other choice, you could say, well, I, I'm going to work on my efficiencies. I'm going to do that. You know, sometimes you can only get so fast. Well, and a lot of times of working my efficiencies is I'm going to cut so many corners that now they complain and now I have a reputation issue. And there's no coming back from reputation issues. You know, there is no returning from that, I mean, it takes a lot. I mean, major PR firms to help people come out of that reputation issue. If you're just starting out and you're like, I'm going to cut corners to save money so I don't have to go in and, and be, you know, honest with someone and say, I screwed up. I underbid yeah. your account. Save money and go do something else. Then, you know, you're going to end up destroying your company just because your reputation yep. sucks. So I would say go in, be tough, tell them that you screwed up and this is what it actually costs. And that's what I would do. Um, so next, at Lorenzo Garcia 3953 um, asks, I ask all the questions during the walkthrough and explain the solution to the problem, but uh, once I talk about money, the manager says that they don't know the budget. That's not true. So I usually have, a, have to submit the proposal, um, and sometimes I hit, sometimes I miss. What's a good way to get the decision maker involved? Well, do you ask? I love this question. We always go back to, if you watch our other ones, you know, the psychology of it. It's okay to act stupid. If you ever watch Columbo, if you haven't, you probably yeah. need to jump in there and Google that. Yeah, probably what? on YouTube somewhere. Um, it's about a detective that he's very smart, but he acts stupid. Yeah. So if you go in and say, hey, you know, how's this decision made? You know, typically when this happens, how does that usually go across? Who do you decide? Yeah. I mean, who usually decides? It is a sales technique. Yep. A lot of times when I see that he says he sometimes he hits, sometimes he misses, that tells me if I was sitting with a sales rep, you already lost. Yeah. You know, you lost before you're sometimes you hit, sometimes you miss because they know how much the budget is. You know how much your budget is. You know how much it's going to cost you. If not, go back to the math video and, yep. and say, this is how much it costs me. So you can't miss. The misses that you're missing are ones you shouldn't have anyway because yep. you're not going to be profitable. And then a business owner will respect that. If I come to you and say, look, it's going to cost me X amount of dollars to clean your building. This is why. This is how long I, I budget it's going to take. Um, this is how many people I'm going to have. And I give that to you. And then someone else just comes and gives you a low number. You're going to be like, this dude don't know what he's doing. Exactly. I don't want this dude in my building. He doesn't know what he's doing. At least Matt came to me and said, or Greg came to me and said, this is how long it takes. This is how long it should take me. And that guy knows the same thing. He has employees. He knows that if I have an employee for eight hours, it costs me X amount of dollars a month. 
and he's going to respect you even more. Yeah. So I, I, I'll say, I mean, I can go on a rant with this. And I'll try to limit it to a short period of time. I might need somebody to come over here and like duct tape my mouth shut because this is one of those things to me that you're nine times out of 10, you're, you're going to be talking to an influencer. You're not going to yep. be talking to the decision maker. And so, you know, and even when you think you are, you're not, you're not, you know, because I, I don't know how many times I've, I've asked the question last time a decision like this was made, how was it made? which is, I, I think, the most effective way to ask that question because you're not putting any one person on the spot. Because if, if somebody asks you, are you, the, are you the decision maker? You're going to give him yes or no. So it's a close-ended question, right? So and it depends how you ask me. If you yeah. ask me, like, look, I don't want to talk to you because you're the decision maker. You're not the decision maker. Right. Then you're going to have a different attitude. Be like, well, yeah, I am. And then I'm going to be like, no. Well, but if you ask me, like, you know, last time this was made, how do you guys make this decision? Well, you just just understand in sales, right? That there's that there's three things that a that a prospect does. Okay, number one, when you ask a question, they lie. Number two, they steal. Number three, they lie. I and mean, those are the three things you need to remember. So if I go to you and I just ask you a direct question, are you the decision maker? They're going to say yes, and they're not. So how effective is that? You You're going to feel good. The, well, or a sales rep's going to be like, well, he is the decision maker. Right. I asked him. Or they're going to say no, and they have a big influence over that decision, and they don't want to be the bad guy because they like you, and they want to tell you no because they want to go with somebody else. So there's so much around this that I, I would- podcast just on this. The, the, absolutely. Sometimes I hit, sometimes I miss. Now, I'm not, Lorenzo, I'm not messing around with you. It's not you in particular. It's just my, I'm on, uh, you know, it's my soapbox, okay? I'm, I'm ranting. This is not a slot machine, okay? This is not I pull the handle and I win some and I lose some. This is I need to know what's happening to me before I leave the building, right? And that's the part that I'm like, okay, if you're doing, if you're walking somebody through the sales process, it's a win-win. Even if you get a no, it's a win-win. But if you're just handing them over a proposal and hoping and praying that when you pull the handle that you win a couple quarters, you win a deal, you're not a very good salesperson. And you know, it, and you'll find that out. The larger deals that you get, if you're dealing with like, you know, fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollar a month, a month deals, you're not missing. No, you can't miss those deals. Well, there is no miss. There is no win or lose. You know, it's just like it, you have to look back and say, what at one at what point did I not help this person navigate through the process? At what point did I not figure out how the decision was made? And so all of this to be said, I would say, is there a good way to get the decision maker involved? You need to learn how to be really good at identifying the decision process, not the decision maker. And you need to get really good at being able to influence the influencer who likes you or is like you and making the decision to go to the, the person who makes the final decision and say, this is the person I want. Yeah. And you have to give them the tools. And this is why. To make it easy for that person to to present it to the decision maker. And that would be a video that you send. This is how I came up with a proposal. This could be a good you know proposal format so it's easy to read. But whatever it is, you've got to get better at recognizing or determining how the decision is made. Don't worry yourself about, well, how do I, who's the decision maker? I only want to talk to the boss. The boss doesn't want to talk to you. And that's the gap in janitorial. If I was selling you a computer system, this is the conversation you and I would have. This is what you expect me as your computer salesman. Yeah. You know, or CRM or whatever it is. Right. But in janitorial, people think, well, I don't need to be that person. I could just throw numbers at people and they'll be like, yes or no. Hit and miss. Don't undersell I, yourself. And God bless us all if we're doing a hit or miss. So, so let's move on Lore to Lorenzo. Thank you. Um, it, got a life to live too. All right. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, can, okay. can you make a video talking about how you build your team? My company is growing, and I'm wondering who to hire. I, I have great news for you. He just created a video about how to build your team. Yeah, we there's a video on YouTube now that's at least a start. But let me just say that, you know, again, you know, the plan is that, you know, as we start rolling out training videos, there's going to be a lot of information that's more detailed. Uh, Always be and, interviewing. If you have one tip that's that's a good that one. I'll give you is always interview. Even if you think my team is set, always look at ad is, and I'm a big football fan, so I follow a lot of coaches and read their books, and they're always looking for someone better than who they have. Yeah. So you're never set. Never. And we do that here. Like, we'll interview people, be like, well, that division is set. We're good over there. 
and we just did it yesterday. Like, well, this dude's a huge asset over to who we have, but they're set. But if we added him, we could grow even more. Yeah. That's one tip I give you. Always be interviewing. Yeah. Always be interviewing is a great, is a great thing. I mean, onboarding, how you interview, um, you know, because onboarding is huge too. If you want good people on board, they've got to feel comfortable that you're going to be somebody they want to look for. Yeah. If you interview and bring somebody in and be like, you know what? I'm not going to give you a schedule. I'm not going to put you on payroll. So it's payday. And you're like, well, how am I going to, oh, let me write you a check. Don't expect to get good people. No. If you're paying people under the table, they're under the table for a reason. Yeah. They Good people want to have steady pay. They want to have their taxes taken out. They want to have all of their Social Security stuff taken out. They're not hiding from anyone. They're an open book. Yeah. And if you're not that company, don't expect to grow your, your team, as you're putting. Yeah. But really, that's what I would say. Yeah. So there's a lot to unpack here, and, and there's going to be a lot more available for folks to to watch because there it is a system. You know, it's not it's not just the interview. It's you know it's, it starts with the ad. It's the interview. It's the onboarding. It's the training. It's the support. It's the ongoing nurturing of those individuals. It's cutting you know bad employees out. So you probably the hardest culture. part of running a business. It, it is. It is. Look, people suck at dealing with other people. You know, there's a reason why most people clean buildings at night because they don't like people. Like they don't want to be out and you know. And they have that misconception that I'm the boss now. You do what I tell you to do. Yes, and that and that's can, the worst. That's the worst. Well, and yeah, model model the type of boss that this isn't a TV that, show. Yeah, that you that you would want to work for, right? Don't model the kind of boss that you see on TV, or model even worse, model the kind of boss that you've worked for before that yeah. were jerks, because that's not a boss. That's just that's just the demonstration of one. Yeah, there's uh, between a boss and a leader. Absolutely. Well, I, I don't want anybody to forget that we we have a uh, very important, very very important um, task for each of you as you watch this video. And I that's, feel like um, it's about it, the like. It. It's going to be like the video. We need to get to a hundred so that Greg over here will wear um, his wig. Um, and I say his because it is actually his. If we get to two hundred, I'll wear it all day. Like go to see customers, and just act like it's like what, what? Well, you know, because you sh- you shouldn't be judged for it because people. I'll just act people, like I always had yeah, hair. People wear wigs all the time. So we get two hundred, and I'll let them ride with me. Okay, so marketing and get ride, the re- we'll ride we'll ride with you. me. Take video and we'll put we'll put that up. Bet I'm good with that. We we good? Yeah, let's go. Let's try it. Well, I'll go. Th- I'll go over to Loma Linda and be like, hey, how you guys doing? Yeah, uh, well, yeah, okay, you do what you got to do. I, I would probably make that day my office day. No, I'll go out and about. I know you. You're, That'll be the bet. If you get 200, you're crazy. We'll do it. So, so 100, he wears it during the podcast. 200, 200. he wears it all day. I mean, all day. All right, all right. So we want to thank everyone for watching or listening to this episode of the podcast. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Um, leave a comment with the topics that you want to discuss next time. And if you are listening uh, to this podcast on Apple or one of the other um, uh, you know, uh, you know, platforms, don't forget to rate and review the podcast. Um, and uh, I think I think we're good there. We are. You know, you're going to have you know, a really cool looking wig. I may or may not have to wear a wig. I, th- I think we're going to get there. I think we're going to do it. Do you think so? I don't know, man. I'm pushing for uh, someone is hitting like right now. I think we're going to get 100. I don't think we're going to get 200. Someone's hitting like right now. Unless my children's children's friends. And- All right. Well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, gosh. Press on the light. I didn't even think about keep that. that on the low, low. All right. Well, until next time, we'll see you later. Thank you.